All right, here we go. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Wondergraph Show and Tell. This is week four, where we're doing an unedited, unscripted edition, where we show what we built in the last week. So this week was a bit busy, and we were supposed to release yesterday, but with the holiday season going around, there's a bunch of colds and things going. So uh, you might notice that Jens isn't here. He's a bit under the weather, but we still feel like it's important to show you guys what we've been releasing. So we're going to start it off quickly with Nithin. Nithin built this week support for private repos, as well as the ability to disconnect and connect repositories. Take it away, Nithin. Yep. Let me show you. All right. So I have created a private repository uh, using Wondergraph, which is available in one of our templates. And let me go and import the project. Everything would be the exact same. So this is a private repo. Let me click on import and give it a name and hit deploy. And cool. like you see, it's the same exact flow, but the magic happens, everything in the back end. And we'll just wait for a while and wait for it to be deployed. And then what's the average deployment time? It's around one minute. It's pretty quick for the initial deployment okay. and every subsequent deployments are, like I told in the previous chapter, blazing fast. Very nice. And I think there's then... no difference in performance in private and public repositories, right? Yeah, there shouldn't be no difference in the deployment times. Super cool. And then one of our users on uh, Twitter asked us about uh, light mode. We have a light mode, correct? We do. Just click Very on your nice. signature and select light mode. Okay, put it back, put it back. I can't look at that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. Yep, we just have to wait for a while. Very nice. I love the logs. All right, cool. Okay, and then in the meantime, what's next on your plate, Nathan? Not sure. What but do we plan on improving? Something pretty cool. Love that. Time to confetti, I can't wait. All right, let's see, 90 seconds. Cool. Looks a bit sleepy today. It's usually about two minutes though, right? Yeah, yeah. A minute or two. It just depends. It's not bad. In which region did you choose? Uh New York. US cool. There we go. Yep, and it's almost done. Yep, and we we'll go to our wonder node, and it's live. Very nice. Great. Yep, and so every... yeah, to show finally about the disconnecting and reconnecting the repo, just go to settings within your project to get, and you'll be able to see a disconnect button over here. You can disconnect it. And in case you would have uh, uninstalled the app or changed your permissions, you can come back and connect your repository again. And it's simple as that. So cool. Great job, Nathan. Next up, we have Sergey. Sergey, do you want to expand what you're talking about? Because it was reported as a bug, but now it's a feature. So I would love to hear more <laughs> about it. That's everything, right? <laughs> yeah. Is it a bug? Is it a feature? We can make a whole new show on that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I would consider it mostly like a mission feature in Wondergraph. It was initially supported by uh, our GraphQL engine. So the thing is that uh, in the GraphQL, you could have uh, default uh, params, uh, def default values for the uh, variables which you define it and using in your query like this name has default like a burn and uh, you use it uh, in your query uh, due to some circumstances in the uh, uh, our engine uh, we were missing this part in the wonder graph but now it fixed it and uh, we we could use it for example i have this uh, uh, data source connected 
Uh, so it's uh, weather API, and we, we could run a query from the GraphQL endpoint, and it will use this default value. And as a default value, so you could overwrite it by specifying variables. And at the same time, it will be working in the operation also. In order to do that, let me import our Postman collection for uh, this one graph instance. So we have our query weather with default and it has name param. In case we are not specifying it, it will use the default burn value. And you could use direct value here and it will be perfect to work in. So now this feature available for, for the wound graph. Very nice, good job, Sergey. Up next, this is probably my favorite update of the week. No offense, guys, but I'm super excited about this one. Yuri with the Turbo Repo support. A lot of people have been asking about this on Twitter, so I'm super excited. Did yeah, you see that you share my screen? Yeah, I know. <laughs> Sorry, but I, I, this is the one I'm most excited about, guys. <laughs> I will come to that in a minute. Okay, so we have a Turbo Repo example. We will discuss it. Uh, while we waiting for deployment. This process, process currently takes approximately two minutes, but we are working on performance tuning. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I think you meant two deployment. seconds, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, that was cash. <laughs> it's really I think, a, I think that's a bug. Uh, we have to investigate in it. it I, I run into it. Uh, multiple times if in development at least. Okay, cool. And like we said, what unedited, surprise. unscripted. <laughs> and I think in the meantime, okay. we can also mention uh, that Yuri is not just working on Turbo repo support, it's, it provides support for many mono repos. So yes, work exactly. with any mono repo. So is this still building right now though? Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. So then, yeah, you can continue talking then. So go ahead. Let's check. Yeah, build is in progress. So yeah, this is a real life example. We took it from one of our users. And here we have an interesting edge case. We don't have dot wonder graph directory. Everything is in the root. Could we pick up uh, the directory based on wundergraph.config.js? Exactly. Okay. Very nice. And so then in unison with this, you're also working on the mono repo support? Yes, we support mono repos. We just took turbo repo example as a bit complex uh, example for mono repos. Is that feature spot. already released? No, we are planning it to release it during the week. Uh, in the worst case scenario, uh, at the beginning of the next week. Okay. okay. We are working cool. on some improvements and um, performance tuning. Very nice. Super cool. A lot of people have been asking about the Turbo Repo support, so that'll be awesome. Yeah, it looks like it's up and running. Let's check. Yeah, we can get some data. Nice. That's awesome. Great job, Yuri. Three minutes this time, but we will reduce it. I like the old one, though. Two seconds was much better. <laughs> All right, next up, Dustin. Dustin will be introducing the telemetry metrics. 
Yes. So, hi. So, in the last cycle, we have worked on telemetry. So, tele telemetry is uh, so we can we allow uh, we can collect some uh, some red metrics from the usage of Wuna CTL that allows us to get more insights how Wuna graph is used uh, and uh, and it, even more important is that we can we can get a bit better picture about what version are using in the wild. Do we need to provide backwards compatibility for our users? Uh, which which not JS version do we need to support in the future? Uh, all those decision uh, has to, can be made based on the based on the data. So those uh, the data is collected by default. It is uh, you have to opt out it. So I can show you an example. Uh, if you run, for example, Wuna CTL generate, you can use uh, uh, environment variable uh, VG telemetry debug one to to get an understanding what kind of data we are collecting with each command. So now you can see we uh, use we track the usage of the command, uh, and we also collect how long it took to run the command. That that gives us some some numbers uh, if if we have to improve uh, the command in, in terms of performance and yes and if you want to opt out it so now my CLI is broken so if you want to opt out you can do it so by telemetry disabled You see, there are no no matrix are collected and nothing is sent to us. And really important again to to mention is that we do not collect any private information, nothing personal. It's purely uh, uh, yeah. So if you scroll up, Dustin, in the docs, mm -hmm. anybody can find these docs. So. There, it's the fourth tab under introduction. And the reason that we're collecting this is you can read right here on why we do this, but we're very committed to our community and we do a lot of hands-on testing, talking to our users and things like that. But it comes to the point where it kind of hinders us because we can't be able to get a full picture. And so the reason we do this is so we can get a better picture in helping all of our users as well as without having to bother you. So now we are able to collect it completely anonymously and it helps us to see, you know, like the duration, how many projects, uh, the operating system and the version of Node. So it's super important for us. And as always, you can always opt out of it. But I think this is going to help us make a better developer experience and a developer product for you guys without having to affect, you know, you guys and talking to you guys and things like that. So that'll be fun. Exactly. It's also nice for us to see how people use Wondergraph. So that's the only... The only aggregated feedback that we'll that we'll get right now, we don't know anything, which is kind of not motivational for us. But the most <laughs> important thing, it's anonymized, and we would appreciate if you would not opt out. Of course, you can. Um, that's all up to you. But we really appreciate the the feedback uh, through that channel um, in return for um, you being able to use a uh, free software package as open source. Yeah, that's everything on oh. our side. Thank you for the awesome. Questions. Thank you, Dustin. Yeah. And next, next time, uh, there's going to be some uh, some error metrics or some error trackings coming up, right? Yeah, uh, we, we would like to know uh, how many errors are uh, uh, yeah are appearing uh, and to yeah, to get a bit a better picture of the uh, of the data. So now we have we've got the basics established, but next time it's really all about finding out what breaks and identifying problems before it hits too many people. Yeah, and we would also like to know what what data sources are used. So maybe we can shift our focus more on that, uh, more on the database, or more on 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 GraphQL. And yeah, we know it's a sensitive sub subject. So if you would like to leave some comments um, below the video, please do. And also, um, you know, you can always comment on GitHub as well. Uh, we're welcome. We're welcoming your feedback in any case. Awesome. Most of you. Thank you, Dustin. Next up is Eoko with the Expo and React Native Edition. Take All it away. Right. Hello, everybody. <laughs> yeah, so we have a, a new example 
uh, with React Native running on Expo. Um, and it's using our new uh, SWR client to fetch data. So here I have my Wunder config and I, this is a really simple app just to, <laughs> excuse me. That shows, uh, uh, yeah, it's a starting point for your React Native project. And um, we introspect the SpaceX API here. And here you can see our application. So to make it work, we have one requirement uh, because React Native is lacking some features that, that we use in our TypeScript client. And so you need to install URL search params polyfill right now. And that's it. Then you can just run it. So let's let's start the application. Yeah. I think I still have something running in here. Yeah. Start. So let's start the iOS simulator. And there it is, the two dragons that are floating around the earth I, right now, I believe. Um, and there is one more feature that doesn't work out of the box, and that is subscriptions and live queries. Um, because we also use one feature for this that isn't supported in React Native by default, which is the native, uh, the event source. So you can install event source polyfill, and then you can start using live queries or subscriptions. So now this data is always up to date in your front end. And uh, yeah, that's it. Thanks a lot for watching. Nice. Awesome. Great job, Yoko. And then now we have an update on the testing framework by Alberto and Suich. Go ahead, Alberto. I think you're muted, by the way. You will not repeat. <laughs> Alberto, you're Still... muted, my friend. <laughs> yeah, sorry, sorry. I was looking for the button. Sorry, everyone. You know, you're fine, you're fine. Uh, when, when you need the button, you, you cannot find it. You cannot find it. It's because, you know, it's, it, it was raining heavily here a few minutes ago. So in case it was, the noise was getting, you know, to the call. I muted mm -hmm. myself, which I usually don't do. But let's get to the point. So it's a pleasure to be here again this, this week. Uh, last week, you were watching us, which we hope you were. We showed an initial alpha of this testing framework. And we promised last week that we were going to release it, and we did. So we are super happy that we got it in your hands. But we made a few changes because uh, with the help of users and other team members, we identified a couple of, you know, stability problems. So if you remember last week, you have to import several things from Gundagraph here and you have to wire them together yourself. So we changed that. So now you only need to do a single import. You create, create a server and everything is set up for you. So now it's way more economic and we have to change this. Uh, last week, if you remember, we were starting the server automatically. Now we changed it to start it manually because this way it works better with testing frameworks that run tests in parallel. So um, the tests, as you saw last week, are fully type safe. You can, if you make a mistake here, the IDE will show you immediately that there is a problem with it. So we've also written tests with yes. It also written a few tests with Ava here, which is basically the same. You know, the API works with any testing framework that you want to, but we are providing you with some examples to get you started faster with your favorite test framework. And here we also wrote some testing using subscriptions and more complicated examples. So you can also use those for for your next project and you can get started with this right away. So that's all for, for the testing framework. And I hope to see you again next week here. Awesome. Great job, Alberto. And so that wraps Thank up you. another episode of Wonder Graph Live. Uh, I do have one small update. So Bjorn has, we mentioned last week, Bjorn started a series called Building Wonder Graph. We recorded an episode yesterday, but this week we'll be releasing an episode of all the founders and of why Wonder Graph. So 
look out for this new series that we have. And thank you again for tuning in to Wondergraph Live Show and Tell. Bye, guys. So, see you later. Bye.